Well hello and welcome to another Skyrim video and today we are continuing our journey of finding the best follower in the Elder Scrolls Skyrim with me ESO but today we're looking specifically at all six mercenary followers you can acquire and who is statistically the best and the worst of them all. Now we have a lot to choose from, from warriors, tanks, rangers, spell swords to pure mages, so there really is something here for everybody and I'll be going over the best way to equip them all to do the most damage. But first, a word from today's sponsors, First Summoner, a new mobile game with a narratively driven storyline and a unique approach to real-time combat. This is not an auto battle game, you actually need to move around and select targets that you want to engage. And as you progress, you'll actually unlock a deck of different monsters and powers that can all be summoned to aid you in battle. Each monster has its own role and you can form battle lines with skeletal archers at your flank and shield wielding undead vikings at the front. I personally love using the troll to counter other big creatures and just absorb a large amount of damage while my archers take care of everything. There are four different heroes to choose from, the knight, archer, warrior or mage, each with their own distinctive battle styles and customizable equipment and outfits. You also get access to spell cards that each have unique effects. My favourite one is Dark Winds because it lets you fire a blast of darkness directly into the enemy that damages and knocks everything back. With over 150 stages, PvP combat, infinite hardcore dungeons and seasonal events to complete and all in a free to play mobile game. To start playing First Summoner right now, click on the link at the top of the description to start building your army of darkness. Let's start out with Genesa, one of the only followers in the game that can actually dual wield weapons. She can be found here in Whiterun roaming the streets and hanging out at the market district looking rather menacing. She wants 500 gold to become your follower. What an absolute gold digger indeed. Now Genesa will start out at level 10 and level with you until level 40, meaning past level 40 she can be replaced with other followers with better scaling. She is however a dark elf which gives her an innate 50% resistance to fire damage. Now this is very useful versus dragons but aside from that it's not that impressive. I'm not impressed Genesa. That said though she does have decent stats at her max level of 40 with a health of 500, a magicka of 50 and finally a stamina of 250 making her reasonably survivable especially with her light armor skill of 100. As for her skill specialization though she is considered to be a ranger and will best suit characters with a sneaky playstyle since she has a reasonably high sneak skill of 50. Now there are better sneak based followers out there but she won't give you away immediately like Lydia will. Yet still my love for Lydia is unyielding. She also has a pretty awesome personality and the quotes she comes up with are just fantastic. She is a very killy dark person and by far has the best archery skill in the game of 100 and her character prefers using bows and keeping her distance given the chance. So if you are playing a tank she's also a fantastic source of damage output if you give her a strong bow. I also recommend enchanting the bow that she's using since followers don't actually use up the enchantment and then give her the best arrows you have since she doesn't consume arrows either. She also has a one-handed skill and block skill of 73 which is obviously decent but I suggest just ignoring her block, remove all the shields from her inventory and then she'll actually start dual wielding so I gave her two Daedric enchanted daggers and she just ran around paralyzing and decimating everyone with them. She just becomes an absolute powerhouse. And like I said, she's one of the few followers in the game that does dual wield weapons, which is really, really nice, as you can see. I do recommend enchanting the blades with absorb health to keep her alive, and also paralysis, because, because when she does paralyze the enemy, which is super, super often, they can't attack you back, so she's literally just a stun bot. And guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure you also subscribe and press that bell icon as well. And then YouTube will actually let you know every time I release a new Skyrim video. And thank you if you are already subscribed. You guys really do keep this channel going, coming back to my videos and watching them. So I massively appreciate that, guys. But the next follower we will be going over is Belorand, who is a Nordic spell sword. You can find him located here in the city of Solitude at the Winking Skeever. You will need to pay him a hefty fee 
of 500 gold though to become your follower. Interestingly though, if you do become friends on your travels, he will offer his services free of charge in the future. Now just like Genesa, he will start out at level 10 and level all the way with your character until level 40 and his stat scaling is actually very decent because at level 40 he will have 432 health, 232 magicka and 232 stamina. So he's a jack of all trades really. And despite having a lower health, Belrand is a Nord which gives him a 50% resistance to frost damage which is usually what you come up against in Skyrim. He will also have his restoration spells like fast healing to heal himself and he has the recovery perk which makes his magicka regenerate 25% faster. I think a lot of people look at followers and take them at face value and don't actually look at all the perks that make them really strong companions. But as for his skills, he's actually one of the most powerful destruction majors in the game with level 100 destruction skill and he has the argumented frost perk meaning his frost spells do an additional 25% more damage. It is however important to note that most foes in Skyrim have a resistance to frost anyway. However, frost spells do also slow your enemies down so it can be very useful with larger groups or kiting bigger enemies. Belrand will also use the Oak Flesh spell and other alteration spells to increase his armor even further and he'll conjure a familiar to help in battle, though it becomes very useless at later levels because it literally dies in one hit. Now I recommend equipping him with the Stalrim Axe enchanted with a frost enchantment so he does an additional 50% more damage with it in total. He also has the Hack and Slash perk which makes him do more bleed damage with axes as well. Now he has level 100 light armor and the custom fit perk which means he gets an additional 25% armor bonus when wearing full light armor so you can get a very decent armor value out of him. Now let's compare the next follower, Mercurio, who is an imperial pure mage to see if he's actually a better alternative to Belran. You will find Mercurio in the city of Riften located here on the map. Once you arrive he will be sitting in the bee and barb in the corner bragging. Yeah. You've probably already yeah. come across him mouthing off about how good he is with the arcane but you may have considered him to be just a waste of time before now because because if you do hire him he sets you back 500 gold and then he starts off at level 10 and levels with you until level 40. At level 40 he will have 432 health, only 50 stamina which he doesn't really need anyway but he will have a magicka of 418. Now Mercurio has a level 100 destruction skill but is a better mage than Belleran because he has a better skill set. Firstly he has the argumented shock perk which increases his shock spell damage by 25% and it's worth noting that shock spells are the best type of magic in Skyrim because literally nothing in the game has a resistance to shock unlike frost. Now Mercurio will use the higher level spells such as chain lightning and lightning bolt and swap to firebolt when he feels like it. He also knows the high level healing spells close wounds and can defend himself with the steadfast ward spell. He even uses the turn undead spell on lower level Draga but he has level 100 restoration which is 27 levels higher than Belrand. Now it is important to outfit Mercurio in mage clothing since he has the perk mage armor which gives him a total armor of 120 when he uses the stone flesh alteration spell. Now that's more armor than you would get for wearing full glass armor and considering he only has level 20 light and heavy armor skill you should definitely be equipping him with enchanted mage robes. Now one of my favorite things about Mercurio is that he will wield magical staffs. This is amazing because you can actually give him any staff in the game and he will just use those powers and he'll spam the crap out of them and they're unlimited so it's ridiculously powerful. For example a staff of summon frost atronach will make him summon one and then it can tank everything for you. Or you can give him a staff of storm wall or another powerful lightning staff to do even more damage with his argumented shock perk and never use up any of the enchantments on the staff. It is pretty damn fun to be honest. Now funnily enough he is also very sneaky with a sneak skill of 73 so he's not going to give you away easily. To summarize Mercurio is definitely a better offensive mage overall than Burland he's just not quite as survivable even once fully equipped. Next let's talk about Eric the Slayer my favorite follower on this list. This is a follower that you've probably missed since he is actually quite hidden away. 
He's located at the Frost Fruit Inn here on the map in Rorikstead. Now, if you've not already Googled my lore video about Rorikstead, I suggest checking out as well. It is a very creepy place. But Eric is a Nord barbarian who wants to be an adventurer, but unfortunately has a overprotective father. Now, in order to hire Eric, he must first convince his father that he should be an adventurer. Now, you can either bribe, persuade, or intimidate his dad. If you're unsure about your skill level, though, just bribe him. Once convinced, Eric will change his name from Eric to Eric the Slayer, which is hilarious because he's... He's not slain anything yet, and he wants another 500 gold before he will even follow you. I swear we just got scammed by this family, like, I swear to god, they just scammed us. So, is Eric the Slayer worth all the fuss? Well, he is the best health scaling ratio in the game. Eric starts at level 10, levels all the way to level 40 with you, and then he'll have a health of 618, which is comparable to many followers, 10 levels higher than him or even further. He also has 50 magicka and 182 stamina though, but to be honest stamina isn't really that useful anyway. Now Eric would make a good tank, but he has a really strange skill set. With a light armor skill of level 100 and a block skill of level 78, and a one-handed skill of level 50. Alternatively, he has a two-handed skill of level 100. He's also a decent archer with level 73 archery. So he's interesting, but all the skills are allocated in such a way that he's not efficient in any position. So to be honest, he's probably the worst follower on this list in terms of skill spread. But for some reason, I really do like him. So what I did is I gave him fully upgraded heavy Stalrim armor, even though he has a low, a low heavy armor skill, but I just upgraded Upgraded it using smithing to give him a 80% damage resistance still, and he became an absolute machine in combat. I'll talk about more how to upgrade the armor of a follower later to literally make them invincible, like Eric now is, but he is just an absolute machine in combat. It's, it's hilarious to behold. He'll take on giants single-handedly. Next, guys, let's move on to some more efficient warriors, starting with Stenva, a Nord who is located here in the city of Windhelm. Now, he can be found on the second floor of the Candle Hearth Inn Hall, but it will cost you 500 gold to hire him, but he will level with you all the way up to his level cap of 40. Funnily enough, though, Stenvar has the same stat spread as Eric the Slayer, which is 50 less health, but the same magicka and stamina. He is, however, a lot more useful as a tanky character that also deals a little bit of damage. He has a level 100 heavy armor skill and level 100 two-handed skill, meaning he can tank and smash efficiently, especially considering he is a Nord with an innate 50% resistance to frost damage. He has a block skill of 78 and a one-handed skill of 50, nothing to shout home about. He also has an archery skill of 73 and can dish out a lot of damage at range. I suggest just equipping him with a two-handed absorb health axe and heavy armor which further increases his health, so he pretty much just never goes down. He really is rather straightforward to equip though. Next we have Vorstag. He is hidden away in the city of Markath at the Silver Blood Inn. You'll usually find him sitting down and drinking orange juice. Pay a man 500 gold and a man will watch your back. Like all the other followers in this video, he is unfortunately also capped at level 40. Though I say unfortunately, but I actually don't play the game past level 40 anymore because I think the scaling of Skyrim actually works best around level 30, where it's still hard but the enemies aren't just bullet sponges. Vorstag has the same stat spread as Stenvar, which is standard for a warrior class anyway. And if you haven't already guessed, he's actually better at playing the role of a tank character. Character. Because Vorstav has a heavy armor skill of 100, a formidable block skill of 78, and finally a one handed skill of 100, making him the best tank follower you can hire at level 40. He also has a decent archery skill of 73, which is very nice, though all the warriors in this list have a sneak skill of 20 which is terrible and they're going to give you away as much as Lydia does. Just equip him with enchanted armor and a sword and board and he's good to go. So to summarize guys, you really can get one of every type of follower to fit the role you want in your party. It is however unfortunate that none of them level past level 40 if that's what you're interested in. So beyond level 40, you can actually find a few other better options. But that said, a lot of these followers can be recruited into the blades, especially Eric. The 
Dragon Slayer. That said though, despite their level cap of 40, if you really like the companion's personality on this list, you can simply follow my guide on how to create armor with like plus 10,000 health and weapons with plus 1,000 damage and you can still use them very efficiently. And of course guys, if you really did enjoy this video, don't forget I've also got a whole playlist linked down below in the description on how to level up all your skills, how to get every single unique weapon in the game and so on. You can check out my channel for literally a guide on everything to do with Skyrim. Let me know in the comment section who your favorite follower was from this video or maybe some of the ones that you've been using throughout Skyrim that weren't Lydia. Shocking, I know. You're in the 1% of players that weren't using Lydia as a follower throughout the entire game. I don't know if I'm upset or angry at you right now. And guys, if you haven't already, please go ahead and download the first summoner linked at the top of the description because that really helps me get future sponsorship deals and it really, you know, helps support the channel. I literally earn more in sponsorship deals than I do from YouTube right now. And, you know, your help keeps that going. So thank you so much for your support on Patreon, becoming a member on the channel, all of that good stuff. I really do appreciate it, guys. So thank you and have a fantastic day. Look how... Look how ill this man looks. I mean, he's an Imperial, but his skin is so grey. He's been using too much magic, my friends. Too much magic. It can't be healthy for us. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Goodbye, and I'll see you in the next video.